Welcome back to the Youth Bible in One Year, day 309. Today we're talking about the promises of God. And what does God promise you? Well, he promises you love, joy, satisfaction, and peace. But how do we find these promises? How do we hold on to these promises? And how do we hope in them for a better life? Billy Bray, born in 1794, was a miner from Cornwall. He was an alcoholic. He was always getting involved with fights and arguments at home. At the age of 29, he encountered Jesus. He went home and told his wife, You will never see me drunk again by the help of the Lord. She never did. His words, his tone of voice and his looks all had magnetic power. It was as if he was charged with divine electricity. Crowds of miners would come and hear him preach. Many were converted and there were some remarkable healings. He loved the Bible and said, The promises of God are just as good as ready money any day. God is the God of promise. Faith involves trusting the promises of God. God makes a promise. Faith believes it. Hope anticipates it. Patience quietly waits for it. From Psalm 119. I rejoice in your promise, like one who finds great spoil. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. Find joy, satisfaction and peace in God's promises. The psalmist says, Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. I remember one young atheist who came on Alpha speaking of the feeling of emptiness and a void in her life. What she noticed about Christians was that they had great peace. She recognized that this came from faith. The last place many people would expect to find peace, satisfaction and joy is through the words of the Bible. Yet the psalmist says, I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. The writer describes the words of God using many different expressions. He speaks of your word, your law, your commands, your statutes, and your precepts. But here he describes the word of God as your promise. The words of God are his promises to you. Discovering them is like discovering a great treasure trove. As you keep digging into it, you'll find more and more amazing and beautiful treasures. This leads the psalmist to say, Seven times a day I praise you. Lord, I praise you for the great treasures that are in your words. Please give me peace today as I trust in your promises. New Testament from Hebrews 6 and 7 When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the ears of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High, He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also, king of Salem means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginnings of days or end of life resembling the son of God, he remains a priest forever. Trust in God's promises and wait patiently. Abraham waited for 25 years. Joseph waited 13 years. Moses waited 25 years. Jesus waited 30 years. If God makes you wait, 
you're in good company. I've often found the gap between the promise of God and its fulfillment to be much longer than I had anticipated. I'm learning to be more patient. God's promises to us are the anchor of our souls. They are solid and secure. He keeps his word, even when it seems impossible, even when the circumstances seem to point to the opposite. Delay does not negate the promises of God. Abraham is described as him who had the promises. When Abraham and Sarah were called by God, he promised that from them would come a great nation. He promised them children, but they had to wait many years before the promise was fulfilled. They waited and waited. They went down wrong paths to try to fulfill God's promise through human means. However, eventually, the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Abraham was a hundred years old. Finally, God fulfilled his promise. After waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. God's promises are absolutely certain. When people make promises, they guarantee them by appeal to some authority above them. When God wanted to guarantee his promises, he gave his word a rock-solid guarantee. Your hope is not based on some vague optimism or wishful thinking. It is a trust in the unbreakable promises of God. It centers on Jesus, who is a high priest forever, in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek appears from nowhere in Genesis and we know nothing about what happened to him afterwards. He foreshadowed Jesus, resembling the Son of God. He continues to be a priest without interruption and without successor. The writer demonstrates the superiority of Jesus, Melchizedek's priesthood, to that of any other priest of Levi. Jesus, a priest in the order of Melchizedek, is a righteous king of peace. Melchizedek's name means king of righteousness and was also king of Salem, which means king of peace. Jesus' priesthood is permanent. No end of life is recorded for Melchizedek. Likewise, Jesus is a living priest forever. Psalm 110 also declares that the Lord is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Jesus, Melchizedek, received a tithe from Abraham. This spontaneous gift from Abraham showed that he realized his own inferiority to Melchizedek. Levi was Abraham's great-grandson. An ancestor is regarded in biblical thought as containing within himself all his descendants. Therefore, the priesthood of Jesus, Melchizedek, enjoys a higher status than that of the Levitical priesthood. Melchizedek gave Abraham a blessing. God had promised that in Abraham all the nations of the world would be blessed. Therefore, if Melchizedek could bless Abraham, Melchizedek's status must be superior to the Levitical order. Jesus' priesthood in the order of Melchizedek reminds us that we can trust that the promises of God are totally secure. Jesus guaranteed them for us by going where we could not on our behalf and he is your high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Lord, thank you that even though I sometimes have to wait patiently, you always fulfill your promises. They are firm and secure, an anchor for my soul. Old Testament from Ezekiel 7-9 to The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to the land of Israel. Their silver and gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. It will not satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs, for it has caused them to stumble into sin. I will deal with them according to their conduct, and by their own standards I will judge them. Listen to God's promises and feed on them. Those who feed on God's promises will never spiritually starve. But many people put their trust in the wrong things. Some put their trust in money for security. However, God says their silver and gold will not be able to save them. Their wealth will not satisfy their hunger. Aristotle Onassis, one of the richest people in the world, 
said at the end of his life, millions do not always add up to what a person needs out of life. Many people try to fill the emptiness deep inside of them in ways that ultimately do not satisfy. They're looking for joy in the wrong places. Wealth, far from bringing satisfaction and joy, can often lead us into pride, sin and idolatry. Furthermore, wealth will never provide total security. A downturn in the market and rampant inflation can lead to even a whole country becoming bankrupt. On the other hand, the promises of God are rock solid. What God says, he promises. Ezekiel declared the promises of God, saying, The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. His message is the end of business as usual. Ezekiel promises God's judgment. It will be absolutely just. I will deal with them according to their conduct, and by their own standards, I will judge them. This will take place on the day when God will judge everyone's secrets through Jesus Christ. Ezekiel caught a glimpse of the one who will judge the world. I looked, and I saw a figure like that of a man. From what appeared to be his waist down, he was like fire. And from there up, his appearance was as bright as glowing metal. This description is close to the description of Jesus in Revelation chapter 1. The only way to escape the judgment is to have a mark on the forehead. The Lord said, go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over the detestable things that are done in it. Do not touch anyone who has the mark. The person with a mark on their forehead had a mark of protection as the impending judgment drew near. The word for mark is the Hebrew letter Tav. This is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. At the time, the letter would have been written X, a cross. Is this a coincidence? Or is there some significance in the fact that those who were protected were those who had the sign of the cross on their foreheads? In Revelation, we read of the angel calling out, Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Lord, thank you that you bore my sin and judgment on the cross. Thank you that you put a mark on my forehead. Thank you that I can trust in your promises for the future and have this hope as the anchor for my soul. Pepper adds, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 15 says, And so, after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Waiting for anything is really hard. Abraham's example is an encouragement to keep on praying, even if it feels as though nothing is happening at all. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you promise me so many good things. Thank you that you give me so many good gifts. I ask and pray now that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit now. Remind me of your promises. Remind me that I am a child of God, that I am wholly loved by you. Fill me up now. Come, Holy Spirit.